Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Vote in the poll for input on future builds, and like and subscribe for better one-liners next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building walking meme and sworn enemy of fourth walls everywhere, Deadpool. While some people find him annoying, beneath his quippy exterior is a heart of gold. And if that heart is ever damaged, he can grow a new one, so that's nice. Captain Deadpool! Nah, just Deadpool. We'll start off with our goals for the build. First, we need a healing factor that heals at factorial levels. Next, we'll get skills with swords and guns, or the fantasy equivalent. Finally, we'll make sure we have maximum effort to keep our party simultaneously inspired and irritated. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just remember we usually multi-class here. Dexterity is going to be number one here. He made his living with sword and shooty skills. Constitution after that, we need a bunch of health to lose and regain whenever we want. Charisma next, Merc with a mouth needs a mouth with which to Merc. Follow that up with strength, a regenerative physique means those muscles are growing back stronger. Intelligence is on the lower end, but he's got a great list of memorized references. And we'll dump wisdom, as he's not really great at reading a room. When building mutants, I like to go outside of the variant human cycle, so make a half elf. You get plus two charisma and plus one into other stats of your choice, go for dexterity and constitution. Your fey ancestry gives you advantage on saves against being charmed and 60 feet of dark vision. Finally, you get two skills of your choice, and this might sound a little weird, but history and religion will let you make references to the lore of whatever world your DM has crafted. For your background, soldier fits the X merc thing pretty well, and gives you proficiency with athletics and intimidation. Now, when we built Wolverine, shameless plug, we took a dwarven-specific feat for our healing, but Deadpool is a tall drink of water, and I think that his burns give him a minor case of alopecia. So our healing is going to come from spells instead, but most most casting classes skimp on the melee skills. If only there were some sort of malleable casting class that could use swords, spells, and endear itself to the party while frequently pissing off the DM and NPCs. First level bards get three skills of their choice. Acrobatics, persuasion, and perception are all good, I'd take those. The main draw here is bardic inspiration, letting you give your allies a d6 for any d20 roll in the next 10 minutes. You've got a number of these equal to your charisma modifier. You get two cantrips, vicious mockery, deals 1d4 psychic damage, and gives the target disadvantage on their next attack roll if they fail a wisdom save of eight plus your proficiency plus your charisma modifier. Blow their mind by telling them they're a CR one half encounter and you're not scared of them. Minor illusion can create small visible illusions, but it can also make audio illusions, so you can listen to Dolly Parton while you shish kebab the bad guys. For your first level spells, Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your charisma modifier to creatures that you touch and you can touch yourself. Just ask everyone else to turn around first. I'm touching myself tonight. Featherfall lets five creatures of your choice make a superhero landing, producing fall damage as a reaction. Long Strider increases your movement speed by 10 feet for one minute. Bane annoys three targets of your choice that fail a charisma save, giving them a 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. Second level bards get Jack of All Trades, letting you add half your proficiency to skill checks that you're not proficient with. The Song of Rest ability adds a d6 of healing when your party takes a short rest. Chalk this up to regeneration for yourself and your cuddling skills for everyone else. Third level bards get expertise and two skills of their choice. I'd go for acrobatics and intimidation, your face is kinda hard to look at. You can also relive your Van Wilder days and pick a college. The College of Swords lets you pick a fighting style. Two weapon fighting lets you add your ability modifier to the second attack you make while dual wielding. It calls Katana short swords so you can use your dex modifier. You also get Blade Flourish, which increases your movement speed by 10 feet when you make an attack and lets you do some fancy things. You use one of your inspiration die and add it to the damage and can add it to your AC as well with the defensive flourish. You can deal the inspiration damage to another target within five feet of the first with the slashing flourish or you can use your reaction to move up to your movement speed around the target with mobile flourish. Personally, I think defensive is the best of these options, but use them as you see fit. Finally, you can learn second level spells. Enhance ability is an extra pat on the back, giving a target you touch advantage on one ability check of your choice. If you choose constitution, they also get two d6 temporary hit points. If you choose dexterity, they don't take fall damage from heights of 20 feet or less. And if you choose strength, it doubles their carrying capacity. Maximum effort, everyone, way to go. Fourth level bards can grab a feat. The tough feat gives you two HP for every level you have and every level you get, making you really hard to kill. Fifth level bards can increase their inspiration to d8s and regain their uses on a short rest instead of waiting for a long rest. Stamina is the gift that keeps on giving or taking depending on your mood. You can also learn third level spells and really we're not taking advantage of the spells from this class just kind of using them for cure wounds. Tongues lets a target you touch speak any language for an hour and Deadpool can speak any language the writers are willing to type into Google Translate so it works. Sixth level alumnus of the College of Swords get an extra attack so you can attack twice with an action and then use your offhand weapon as a bonus action. Dual wielding is kind of weird. You also get counter 
Power Charm, which lets you give advantage to allies within 30 feet of you to saves against being frightened or charmed. 7th level bards get 4th level spells, and since this is the only thing at this level, I'm pressured to actually kind of find one. Freedom of movement lets a target of your choice ignore in difficult terrain, paralyzation, or restrainment. They can also spend 5 feet of movement to break out of manacles, which beats sawing your own hand off. 8th level bards can take another feat. The crossbow expert feat lets you mix in some guns into your swordplay like a murdery Reese's peanut butter cup. You ignore the reloading element of a hand crossbow. You can hit targets within 5 feet of you without disadvantage and can make an attack with that hand crossbow as a bonus action after attacking with a melee weapon like your short sword. 9th level bards, Song of Rest healing increases to a d8, and this ability scales worse than just about any other ability I can think of. You also learn 5th level spells. Legend lore lets you get lore details on a person, place, or object, so your jokes can be more specific. If you already know a bit about the thing, you get a little more information, so that history and religion proficiency comes in handy. You could also use this 5th level spell for something important, but where is the fun in that? 10th level bard is a big one. Expertise and two more skills, religion and history, will power up that legend lore, so I'd go for them. Your inspiration die bumps up to a d10, and you get magical secrets, letting you steal two spells from any list you like. Beacon of Hope gives creatures you choose within 30 feet of you advantage on wisdom saves, but more importantly, it maximizes any healing done to them for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. Hunter's Mark lets you get specific about who you're killing, giving you advantage to track a creature and an extra d6 to damage with weapon attacks against them. Find Francis and make him look like a jack-o'-lantern in December. 11th level bards get 6th level spells, and we're stretching definitions again, but I promise it'll make sense in a second. Find the Path lets you find the most direct route to a specific location. It's like a fantasy Google Maps. If the location is on another plane, it moves or isn't specific, the spell fails. Wade used to hunt down bad guys on the regular, so I'm pretty sure he had a GPS or something. 12th level bards get an ability score improvement. Round up your constitution and charisma for more health and inspiration, respectively. Finally, at 13th level, you can learn 7th level spells. Regenerate heals 4d8 plus 15 to a target you touch, and they regain 1 HP per turn. Severed limbs also grow back in 2 minutes, which is really fast, so enjoy the baby legs while you can. Considering you have the ability to grow a new arm, a d10 song of rest is hilariously small now, but whatever, you get that too. 14th level bards get more magical secrets. Heal from the cleric list instantly heals 70 HP to a target of your choice, and again, that can be you. I'd also take magical weapon, making a weapon magical for overcoming resistances and giving you plus one to damage and attack rolls. Not something Deadpool has done, but it's a safeguard in case your DM hasn't blessed you with a lightsaber yet. You also get master's flourish, letting you use d6 six instead of using an inspiration die when you use blade flourish, letting you use one every turn if you want and save your inspiration for the rest of the X-Force. 15th level bards can learn 8th level spells. Glibness makes all of your charisma checks at 15 or higher for an hour, so no magic can determine if you're lying. This is the ultimate why did that charisma check work. It's perfect for Wade. Your inspiration die are also now d12s for maximum maximum effort. 16th level bards get an ability score improvement, more constitution means more health to recover. We're gonna finish this build off with a couple fighter levels. First level fighters get another fighting style. Archery adds 2 to range weapon attack rolls for more accurate shots. Second wind lets you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action for even more self-healing. Second level fighters get Action Surge, letting you make an additional action once per long rest, for a little extra damage when you really need X to give it to them. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype champion is simple but fun. Improved Critical lets you crit on a 19 and 20, doubling your chances to do massive damage. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement, cap your constitution for the most health possible. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have a massive pool of health with well over 200 hit points. You've also got lots of healing potential, not technically just for yourself. Remember, hit points aren't meat points. Restoring hit points could be as simple as bolstering resolve, especially when cast by a bard. Finally, extra attack, crossbow expert, and flourishes make you a decent damage dealer up front, with options to stay in the background, giving you versatility for a complicated fight. For weaknesses, we sort of shot ourselves in the foot by not taking more spells. You should be able to learn about five more. That's on me, but really I feel like most casters find about ten spells they like and don't really deviate anyway. Next, we don't have a capped offensive ability. A higher dexterity would mean better better AC, more accurate attack rolls, and more damage. If you want to play more offensively, swapping those con bumps for dexterity would help. Finally, your casting modifier is a little low as well, meaning spells with saves are most likely going to be useless against higher level enemies. But Deadpool solves most of his problems by throwing his body at them until the enemy gets tired. With an insane amount of health and healing, you just need a bit of patience to take down even the nastiest of foes. Just remember that Wade is an endearing jackass, even if he is an obnoxious one. Strike that delicate balance and you and the party will have a great time, as long as you watch out for those wind advisories.
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We've got a lot of heroes this month to celebrate Endgame. After that, the next big movie I'm excited about is Star Wars, so vote in a poll for your favorite Star Wars villain. Your options are Darth Maul, General Grievous, or Darth Vader. Come back next week, it'll be here in a flash.